everybody and welcome to Cabaret Secrets. My name's Gary Williams and today's guest is a singer-songwriter. He's the founder of Web Coach London and Between the Songs, both providing services for cabaret performers. And you may recognise his voice from his own YouTube channel, Behind the Mask. Marcus Reeves, welcome to Cabaret Secrets. Hello, thank you for having me on, Gary. Here we are at the London Cabaret we Convention. It's the, it is, I've got the right name, yeah, haven't I? Yeah, it's very exciting. There's all sorts of, sorts of interesting people plying their wares. We've had some burlesque size, I think it was called. I managed well. to avoid that. I yeah, went and got a cup I, of tea. I had a glass of wine and some spaghetti <laughs> instead. Now, we've only got a few minutes because I'm going to be pulled you up to be on a panel oh. shortly. Um, but I wanted to grab you oh, because yeah. tell me about, um, particularly about Between the Songs. What is this, yeah. uh, what is it all about? It's a new service for performers, mainly cabaret performers, but you could be a singer-songwriter. Um, and it's about does what it says on the tin. What happens between the songs? Because many of us can sing a nice song very well and uh, do that bit of it, but what happens? How do you introduce your songs? How do you form a cabaret show? Um, how do you remember your lyrics? What do you wear? How do you find an arranger or a musical director? How do you find a web designer? All of those things. So, on stage or backstage? So it's every, because you're, you're quite right, I mean, we, we've all met lots of people, and yes. we know lots of people who are lovely singers, beautiful voices, and they sing so well, but that's far, that's just the very beginning of, of very making beginning. a cabaret, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, because, you know, there's all, cabaret has become a catch-all term for all manner of things. You might be a comedy artist, you might be a, a poet who likes to sing, um, so, but making a show is very different from just standing up and singing a bit of Andrew Lloyd Webber in a nice frock. Mm. Um, so, yeah, you might be an emerging performer who's got lots of ideas and doesn't know how to bring them together, or, or you might be an established person who wants to try something new. Um, and I think it's, it's often very helpful to have someone to bounce ideas off, to tell you where you're going right, and applaud you for that, to maybe send you in a different direction if you're not. This is what people, when I first started, used to call act doctors. Aha! You heard of that phrase? I've heard of theatre doctors, but not act doctors. An act doctor, yeah. I remember, yeah, I remember a friend of mine, when I first, I mean, 20 odd years ago, yeah. you know, and I was really struggling for direction. I was working in the clubs and doing whatever, you know, uh -huh. I could get. And I really, really wanted, desperately wanted someone who knew more than I did to come along and look at my act and say, like, OK, here's some direction, just yeah. to direct me, yeah. guide me. Because I didn't know everything I was doing. I was just making it up That's as good. I was going. Yeah. There, was no, there was no school, there were no books, and there were no uh, classes, and there were, I couldn't find any people. Because when I was there, in that situation, the act doctors had long since gone, because right. they, were, they were around right. 40 years uh -huh. ago, you know. So what you're providing now is an invaluable service, I think. To, so this is a, a one-on-one -on -one kind That's of service. Right. Um, yeah. An hour-long session. What I always say is people say, oh, are you a singing teacher? No. Mm. Everything but, basically. Uh, I don't claim to be a singing teacher. Um, so, yeah, we'll meet up for an hour. Uh, talk. At, uh, some sessions are talking, you know, working through blocks or things that you're struggling with, worried about. And often the I like to do a lot of practical work as well, so we'll go through the act, you'll perform it, I'll tell you what's working and what isn't. Um, and also, uh, I can give you insights into you know, how to market your act, who you should be approaching in terms of promoters and venues, who maybe you might not want to work with. All sorts of things, insights that I've gained through my my years in the business. <laughs> I think we're quite similar in that respect because I mean I don't know about you, but when I when I started writing Cabaret Secrets, I, I didn't really think I knew much about anything. But when I started writing it, I thought actually I, this is something I do know something. About. And over the years, you we, we acquire this knowledge, but it just becomes second nature to us. That's but right. and you stop and think one day, you think this is actually really valuable to people yeah. that don't know any that yeah. are new to this yeah and what I try and encourage uh, the people that I work with is often people will say I don't know anything about XYZ or I haven't got any ideas often that the, the opposite is the case um, what most people have is they know what they like and what they don't like sometimes they know what they're good at and what they're not good at that sometimes takes a bit more work. But yeah, I think if you, the, the world that we move in, you've got to be pretty um, resourceful and focused and have your finger in a lot of different pies, as I think we both do. Um, 
so often we we all know things but sometimes it takes takes a bit of reminding what you know from from an external source one question i've got for you if you're working with somebody then you say okay uh, uh, perform your show for me I, I think I'd be able to do that now, but years ago, I, I just couldn't have done that to, to a person, sort of in an audition sort of situation. I would have been embarrassed, yep. um, I would have felt intimidated, but also, in cabaret, the audience reaction is, is can be a really integral part of it. And yep. when there's one person sitting there with their arms folded, watching, uh, passively, um, it's, it's really hard to do. How, do you, how do you help people feel able to perform for you? That's a difficult question. Um, usually through several cups of tea and, and quite a lot of cajoling. My, my attitude, you know, I'm, I've always tried lots of different things. I originally wanted to be an artist and a rock star. I um, haven't achieved either of those, but I've tried lots of things along the way. I've been a puppeteer, I've been an actor, I've done this, that, the other. Um, and if I hadn't tried those things, hadn't just done them, given it a go, I wouldn't be where I am now. So to me, it's almost the opposite way around. If you can't do it for one person in, in a living room with their arms crossed, in many ways, you need to get beyond that to be able to successfully do it in front of a, a room full of people. That does take crossed. that does, does take a lot of confidence and experience, does. doesn't it? I couldn't have done that. I, though I, I, I was doing it successfully to an audience. Yeah. Just I remember what my ex-boyfriend, uh, well, husband, we, 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 he, he's a director, uh -huh. and he would say to me, oh, let's just try that thing. And I said, I can't. I just feel, it, would, it just seemed ridiculous to me to do it just for him. And yet I would, then I would do it, you know, yeah. successfully in a room full of people. I think it reminds me of my days as a life model. Um, when the first time I went to a life modelling session, I thought, oh my God, I've got to take my clothes off. And I stood there and felt very self-conscious. And for about three minutes, I was really blushing and felt awful. And then thought, oh, actually, it's, it, it's fine. And my attitude is, once you've done it once, there's no reason you can't do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it's, it, it's always tricky. But at the same time, you have to ask yourself, how much do I really want to do this? Is it just a hobby? Do I want to do it as a profession? And when I say, what do I have? To, what will I have to do to to get to be where I want? I don't mean, you know, having to get jiggy with with Simon Cowell or something like that. Heaven forbid. Um, you mean roll your sleeves up and just get on with it? Yeah, you've got to because in in the world we move in, there's going to be someone else who may not be as good as you, may not be as good looking as you, um, who will be able to just go, yep, yeah, fine. So it's, you, you, you've got to... People come to me a lot for help with the, the chat, the patter. It yeah. seems to be the, yeah. the, the biggest stumbling block that people have. How do you help them get a handle on that? You've got to be really clear about what it is you're trying to say. Um, I've got several do's and don'ts about what I think you should and tell me. say. Oh, giving away the secrets. Well, one thing that I always say is uh, context, not content. I'm sure we've seen plenty of singers. This is, is more of a problem for me with singer-songwriters. They'll tell you the name of the song, they'll tell you what the song is about, and then they'll sing the song. So they're basically doing the same thing twice. Uh, to me, it's more interesting to hear why they wrote the song, who the song is about, as opposed to what the song is. We don't need to know that because that is the song, that is the performance. So things like that, being clear, um, sometimes you might have a list of 18 things that you want to tell us about this wonderful song that you've written or means a lot to you because you played it at your granddad's funeral. Sometimes you don't need to say anything. That is that is a good one um, because people can go all around the houses and spend 20 minutes introducing a two and a half minute song when they actually don't need to say anything. And this kind of advice when you give this to people, I mean, it takes years to learn this, doesn't it? And so it's worth its weight in gold just for somebody to sit down with you for an hour and for you to tell them this yeah. one, which just saves them. I mean, it could save them Lots years of hard work. Of yeah. Hard work. Yeah. Um, can I ask you uh, charges? I mean, is this something that you you publicise or that you know yeah. people? Get, people ask for, I mean, how much does it cost? I've got a website and I charge um, £45 for one hour session, but I also uh, do block bookings, so you can get three uh, sessions for 100 quid. Um, and if you look me up, betweenthesongs.co.uk, um, and I'm going to do a little offer for people from your podcast. You can get £10 off if you uh, mention Gary when you email me to book a session. I'm going to book it myself. Thank you so much for talking to us today. No problem. Thanks for having me.
Thank you for listening to this Cabaret Secrets podcast. If you've got any comments or questions, please visit cabaretsecrets.com where you'll also find details of the Cabaret Secrets book, an indispensable guide on how to create your own show, travel the world, and get paid to do what you love. 